So today I want to take you through a little process here. Michael's going to help me here also. Um, we're going to, I want to induce kind of a little bit of a hypnotic state. It's kind of a self-hypnosis, but I'm not going to tell you to stand on your head or anything. Um, but we're going to go deep into and just sit with ourselves. And we're going to move from the flute into this gong. And the neat thing about a gong, gong is very ancient science. Mm -hmm. I have a brother-in-law that lives in Thailand, and of course all we do is go from temple to temple in Thailand. It's just a fabulous thing to do. Mm -hmm. And every temple has a gong. And every gong has dust on it. And I thought, well, maybe they don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> you know. But um, when Yogi Bhajan first came to America, he played gong. And he insisted that every ashram in America had a gong because it's such a profound science. Let me explain it a little bit to you. Um, when we tune in to a Kundalini Yoga class, we go, Aung Namo Guru Dev Namo. It's a way of tuning in. We, we chant the Aung, O-N-G, Aung. Mm -hmm. It's different than Om. <clears throat> Om is the divine unmanifested. Did you ever, anybody uh, read the Proof of Heaven? Read the what? Proof of Heaven, the book. A guy has a near-death experience and he goes over to the other side, what does he hear? He hears OM. Okay? But on this side, we need an earth element, the creative aspect, the creative sound, and that's OM. OM. Okay? And it's, think of it this way. So the Big Bang thing happened billions of years ago, correct? Well, we're products of that, right? Okay? We're the manifestation of sound. Sound happened. Vibration happened. We're the manifestation. That initial sound is Aum, if you were to put it in a human voice. And this is a gong. <laughs> There's a relationship, okay? So that's why this gong is so incredible. Uh, first of all, it's not a linear instrument, so the mind can't follow it. Eventually the mind surrenders to it, and that's when the gong begins to do its best work. It moves into your body, and it's like a vibrational massage on a cellular level. Mm -hmm. It's very beautiful and it helps bring you to that neutral place. Because you can't, you can't do anything intellectual with the gong. It's like in the phone room, somebody come up and angry at me, well, da, 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 and I don't do anything. I says, well, gosh, let's think about that. <laughs> There's nothing to react to. And that's the beauty of the gong. So I want to bring you into that, and then we're going to come out of that, and we're going to do a mantra meditation, okay? So mantra, you've all heard of mantras. Anybody not heard of mantra? What's a mantra? Seed sound. Chant. Seed sound. Chant. Yeah. Chant. Yeah. Sound. What? Chant. Chant. Yeah. Mantra is a sound that you repeat. Okay, why do we repeat a sound? Reinforce. Reinforce, okay. Quiet the mind. Quiet the mind. How does it do that? By making it autonomic. Okay. Change of focus. focus. Change of focus, okay. Well, let's think of it this way. Uh, the ancients found that certain sounds had a harmonic relationship with the soul. Okay, Michael's a musician, he knows this. You get one string in tune, the other strings begin to vibrate, okay? harmonic relationship with the soul. And if you, as you repeat that, the mind then begins a relationship with the soul. Okay, it begins creating an alignment with one's truth. When that is happening, anything outside of that truth is released. The mind doesn't need it. Because the mind is finding its inherent nature, which is to reflect the soul. It wasn't never meant to just go off on its own, which for most of us, it's going off on its own, you know, multi... See, so the mind is beyond time and space, isn't it? It's infinite. There's no form in mind. You can go here with time, you can go there in space, can't you? It needs that capacity to reflect the other infinite part of ourself, which is the soul. But if we don't train the mind, what's it going to do? What's it not going to do? It's not going to stop thinking, is it? Okay, so it'll start thinking, well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to go do this, I'm going to go do this. 
How many times have we been in trouble with the mind that just is going out of control? How often, especially in the information age, are we just weighted down by the amount that's going in our minds constantly? So when you chant a mantra, and the mind begins to recognize this harmonically tuned sound, all this noise begins to get <clears throat> released and purged out of the mind. And by the end of the chant, the mind is calm and clear. So I'd like to take you through that exercise after we do the gong. So this will take about, how much time do I have, Cindy? When did I start? Okay. It's all good. There is no time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, so we'll take about, about, you know, eight or nine minutes total, okay? So what I'd first like you to do, if you'd be so kind, is just to sit up to keep the spine straight. One thing the yogis found was that they use gravity well. So when gravity, when you're sitting up straight, gravity pushes the spine in a way that it pushes the spinal serum back up into the brain. And so it needs that straight spine, okay? So just gently now relax the muscles in your face and allow the eyelids to become heavy. Let's not really close them because we don't want any tension. Let's just relax the eyelids and bring your mental attention up to your brow point. It's a very beautiful place to put it. It's better than the elbow or the heel <laughs> or the thumb. But let's just bring it to your brow point. And I'd like you now to take a deep inhale through your nose and exhale. Go ahead, Michael. And inhale. And exhale. And just continue that breath, just for a few moments here. Inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the nose. We use the nose breath rather than the mouth breath because these two nostrils have a relationship with our brain, the hemispheres of the brain. And as we breathe nostrally, it balances those hemispheres. Let's do a few breaths together. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Let's do two more now. Inhale.
And that may be a lifetime endeavor, reaching for my truth, aligning with my truth. Mother Teresa says, the only thing we own in this life is our power of surrender, to surrender to my truth. And that's the power of meditation. It's the power of prayer. It's the power of practice. Because to understand fully our gifts and our unique truth and how infinite and wonderful and majestic we are, it takes a neutral mind. It takes a disciplined mind to be able to come to that point where we can truly surrender to that reality. So thank you all. I'm sorry if I put you to sleep. <laughs> but thank you all for having me again. And it was so lovely to be here with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.